regarding the Tigray, Tigray and Ethiopia uh, war uh, fighting going on right now. So, I, is it possible uh, right now for Oromos, for Amahara, uh, or the other tiny groups, small groups like Somalis, to support TPLF or Tigray Liberation Front in retaking power, in taking the country back again? Is it possible for the TPLF to reclaim power? After four decades of dictatorship ruling in Ethiopia, they have been ruling the country for the last 30 years. And I think many challenges, uh, including uh, some of the small scale genocide against small, uh, against some area of the country, by the TPLF during their. Uh, during their times uh, for the last 30, 30 years. But I think the most notable things that we notice from afar, from outside, uh, people that want to do businesses or for families that live in the country, that want to live a uh, luxury life, a uh, fun life or a comfortable life, it's not possible. It not, it's not possible under the TPLF government policies because they they don't have the initiative in the economy like in businesses they lack the accountability in its political ambition for those years under the TPLF regime for example if somebody were to buy um, there's over 100 million people if they want any of them want to buy a vehicle let's say from from the United States or from any country they pay 30 Thirty thousand dollars for that car, enable for them to get it into the into the country. The government, Ethiopian government, under the TPLF regime, will ask the people to pay another hundred uh, percent value of the vehicle. They already pay thirty percent of the car. Now they have to pay this government again a hundred percent value of the car, in addition to the insurances, the registrations. Meaning that they have to buy the vehicle two times, one from the dealership or from whoever they buy the vehicle from, and then second time they have to basically buy it from the government again, pay the government the value of the car to get into in to get to get it into the into the country, which is terrible. Most people cannot even make enough money in their lifetime to buy a, re a car when they have to buy buy it two times. It is economically disabling. It's disproportionately affecting uh, even the majority of 90% of the population of Ethiopia. This is not only the car, it's, it goes for everything else. Only if you are connected to the government, families, you, you're, you're a member of the TPLF, or you are the TPLF members, or, the, or bigger company that have a hand in, in, with the TPLF who can who open businesses, can bring these equipment, the money, different uh, things into the country without having to deal with this, with this kind of nonsense. So this basically disables the prospect of uh, businesses in the country. And at, in addition, the TPLF it uses the resources, the land. I'm talking about the affordable, the land where you, people can grow food. They can grow. Uh, affordable land and they remove the people by force and if you've been living there for a generation they don't ask you uh, and they, you don't have a choice either you move or they kill you that's what's been happening in the Oromo people their lives and wealth have been looted and put on the chopping block and for that for that time period so the question is now, can the entire population ever trust? Can they trust Tigray again, fight alongside uh, to help them to tip balance of power in Ethiopia, help Tigray come back in power again? My agreement is that, uh, anyway, most people don't want to genocide. 
don't want the revenge killing that's going on. Because what's happening for the last three years in, in, in the war in Ethiopia is, is basically revenge. Killing for the killing that TPLF have been doing the last 30 years. Looting for the looting that was done by the TPLF for the last 30 years. Subjecting TPLF, the Tigray population, uh, in, in, in subjecting them to starvation, disease, by cutting off the food, the road, the medication, even the humanitarian assistance from this region. These regions, they are made to pay for the crimes, for the looting, for the starvation, for the slow-scale genocide committed by the leadership of the TPLF. The Tigray population have, nothing, have done nothing wrong, and in my opinion, they should, not, never, should never face starvations, lack of food, cutting off of road, shutting down the market is of these people. They, they should open the market is for the people. The government of Ethiopia, they should not punish the Tigray population. Because the Tigray population, even though they support the, their political parties, in most cases they are not choices, but to support, they should not have to die because they are living in this corner of the, of, of the country. They should not have to die because they, they are stuck in between the Ethiopian government and the TPLF rebels who are not allowing the populations to even send their loved ones money from a, from a board, from afar, from a uh, foreign... Uh, for example, there are articles that are written by... Uh, is written and it's on, on, on the internet that I can put a post link on here that says Populations they interview many Tigray people, and most of the complaints say is that the, the Tigray rebels they're not allowing f uh, the money to get to the people. Either they take half of the money that uh, the loved ones, the families of the Tigray population who lives in the United States or in Europe, send these to these families to save their lives from dying in starvation. The money that were sent either taken 100% by the T TPLF or they actually never get a chance to uh, get the money into Tigray because what happened is they send the money to Ethiopia or to Eletria because Tigray region don't have any banks. They don't have any, any way to send the money over there. So they send it to the neighboring countries and they send somebody to get get them. Somebody will pack, carry the money into the Tigray region to get it to the family. But they have to go through the border, border check by the TPLF. The TPLF is, is a rebel groups uh, who are who, who, rebel groups that is in control of Tigray. These Tigray rebel will take the money. That's supposed to go to this family is dying in starvation, dying in disease. They will steal the money, keep it for themselves, and kill the person who brought in the money, or force the person to give them 50% of the money and give the family a few dollars left over, which is not enough to what was supposed to be year-long uh, financial money that they're supposed to live off for the whole year. So that this is, shouldn't be happening. So the, the, the strongest argument from the Oromo and Amhara and Somali communities in favor of Ethiopian current IB government is that the Tigray, TPLF cannot be trusted. One is a dictator, always a dictator. They say the Tigray, Tigray uh, TPLF have been a dictator of the country who doesn't allow elections, who rob, who, who takes your, your land, your freedom, who oppresses you. And you cannot 
we cannot go back and live under these people. They were, they were given 30 years and they have failed. This is what a lot of the Romo population saying. This is what is posted on, on the news. A news that is populated by <coughs> news that is populated by the Oromos, by the Amahara, by the Somalis of this region. And each of those groups will go on list of genocide, mass mass killing, looting of wealth, properties, lack of freedom under the TPLF they have suffered for the last thirty years that the, the TPLF being in power and they don't want to the same return, the, the same genocide, the same suffering to return. In the turn of morality, knowing what is happening, knowing what's wrong or right in the circumstance, in turn of morality, knowing what is right and wrong to do in circumstances, even where one is, no one is watching. In my opinion that the Tigray government the Tigray government, whatever happened with the Tigray government, the people of Tigray should not be subjected to uh, starvation, in slaughter, dying in 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 in, in starvations, lack of food, lack of medication, and because the government of uh, Ethiopia have burn down the, the fields where people grow food all over the villages and town and everywhere. And anyone who found to be farming, growing food for their family will be will be killed. So this is intentional use of uh, uh, f food, not, not being allowed to grow your own food is an intentional inflection of of uh, weaponizing food and and that is obviously not a way to deal with the conflict and I think if the open government even if they themselves are not allowed not able to do what what it, what they want to do which is to kick out the the, the TPL life and, pro and provide food for the people themselves they should allow humanitarian assistance to bring the food, to allow uh, the the food to get through the Amfar region and get rid of these, get rid of the Somalis, the Amfar that is blocking the road and stealing the food for, you know, that is humanitarian food from coming into the through the Amfar. Get rid of those groups. And and that and uh, what is happening right now? It seems like basically uh, the. The Eritrea government, the Sudan, are not helping, but the Eritrea and the Ethiopian government is working together with the Kenyan government, with Somalis and Djiboutis. They're trying to crush this region completely. And uh, it, it, it looks like in the long run, this, this war is going to be, it's not going to be, uh, it's not going to be over. I think this, it's possibility that it will last for another 10 years or more, because even if the, if the TPLF defeated were to be, to be chased out of uh, Mil uh, Milik, uh, the city, and, uh, and it's possible that they will be able to continue to exist in a uh, mountain uh, rubble fighting in, in, in the jungle. And it will not be possible. These groups are very good at fighting. It's not be possible to uh, to live uh, to there, there there to be no TPLF. Even if there is uh, technically if there is no TPLF completely today, then there is there is going to be an issue of the the two major biggest group Amhara and Oromo. Those two group will always will will not always but will continue to be fighting each other. And if the Oromo were to be, uh, let's say, OLF, the Oromo Liberation Front, they have no history of being running the government. They have never run any government, and most likely they will be running a Somali-style government where dictatorship is is basically uh, the role of the government. Uh, 
or something like Assyria. They have no history of running government. They're intellectually uh, very low hanging fruit when it comes to they can they have no ambitions to run any kind of competent government uh, that we see in the West today. And so that's my take, and I think this war will will continue to go on for another 10 to 15 years. And the Oromo will not possibly, under Oromo or the Amhara, the sustainability of having this group, bringing everybody together to live in peace is very remote. And stay tuned.